Good morning, good morning, and praise God. It is a, a blessing, as always, to be here before you. Um, once again, I'm, I'm, my name is Marvin Williams. I'm the youth pastor at Ecclesia uh, Christian Fellowship, and uh, we're here to get started. We're going to have our Bible study. We had an awesome time this past weekend with our, um, our war room prayer hour. We had our war room prayer hour which was a blessing uh, hosted by uh, Reverend Nasir Ig Igbao, I believe. I, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but it was a nice time. It was a healing service and we were led by some awesome prayer in regards to our war room prayer hour. We also earlier this morning had our, our drive-in service here at Ecclesia, which was uh, led by our senior pastor, Pastor Dr. Joshua Beckley. And, um, so we had a good time at our drive-in service, but we will still and are, and we are still keeping our online presence going. So though we have a morning worship service physically here at the church, we also will have our online service at 1030, starting at 1030 with our praise and worship. Our praise and worship team does an awesome job. So praise God for them. Um, before I continue and say anything else, you know, my custom is to open us up in prayer. I'm going to open us up in prayer. We're going to get right into the word of God. I will not uh, keep you long. I will uh, respect your time because I know you want to enjoy your Sunday. So let's, let's just get started. I'm going to open us up in prayer. Wherever you are at, let's just bow our heads and let's just go before the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Father, our God, we just thank you for every single day. Thing you have done, every single thing you do, and every single thing you will do in the coming and in the near future. We thank you, our God, for your son, Jesus Christ, for dying on the cross for our sins. We thank you, our God, for the forgiveness of our sins, our Lord. We thank you, our God, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your word. You have blessed us with your Bible. You have blessed us with your word, our God. You have called us out from a, from a lifestyle of worldliness you have called us out as your children and we thank you we thank you our God for saving us from a life of sin we thank you our God for blessing us with the life of eternity our Lord and we right now ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit which you sent as a comforter which you sent to someone to help us to understand your word which you sent as someone to reveal your word unto us so that we can better understand you, so that we can better relate to you, our God. We ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit right now, not only for myself, but for all of the men and women of God across your footstool, throughout your creation, whom are teaching, whom are spreading, whom are preaching your gospel. Anoint them and bless them that your word goes forth so that we worship you in spirit and in truth and that your word goes forth and does not return unto you void as it is written in your word. In the holy name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So praise God. Last week's <clears throat> um, message was was a message that touched on. Um, it touched on. Um, we were talking about the three parts of God. We were talking about the three parts of God. We had uh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And I wanted, I attempted to give more clarity on the three parts of God because I know that can be hard to uh, separate uh, Jesus Christ from God. And, 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 and I know, and we know, and we believe that Jesus Christ is God, but it is hard for us to compute that or to understand that how could Jesus Christ be 100% man and how can Jesus Christ be 100% God? And we use some illustrations with an orange, the three parts of an orange. Though you have one orange, it has three parts. I believe if I remember correctly, it was the exocarp, which was the outer part of the orange, and the mesocarp, which was the inner or the edible part of the orange, and the endocarp, which was the, the seeds within the orange. But the orange itself is one orange and all three of those carps, the exocarp, the mesocarp, and the endocarp equal one carp, which is called the pericarp. 
And those are the three carps or the three parts that equal one particular part. So I tried to use a basic or simple illustration <laughs> so that we could understand um, Jesus Christ being God. <laughs> and we, I scratched the surface on a kinsman redeemer. I scratched the surface on the kinsman redeemer and we, and we went into that in order for Jesus Christ to save us, he had to first be related to us. So in order for God to save us, he had to be related to us. He had to connect to us because you cannot save or reach a person that you are not connected to. And that is what we, we went on and we went into the kinsman redeemer, which is a phrase in the Old Testament, which is discussed in the book of Ruth. The kinsman redeemer or a good illustration of the kinsman redeemer is discussed in the book of Ruth. I advise you to read the book of Ruth. It is only four chapters when time allows. I will touch on it briefly today to kind of give a little bit of a uh, more example of a kinsman redeemer. But I also know God willing, unless something else comes up, the message next week will be focusing on Ruth as we move into uh, our Mother's Day <clears throat> celebration. So praise God for that. Today's reading, I'm gonna come first, I wanna come out of the book of Romans chapter eight. Um, so if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to the book of Romans chapter eight, verses 28 through 30. So I'm gonna be reading those scriptures for you and if my editing goes right, I should have those scriptures available also on the screen for you. So in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 28 through 30, and we will be talking about today relationships, relatable relationships, relatable, relatable relationships and, and, and the kinsman redeemer and trying to give a little more clarity on the kinsman redeemer as we try to give a little more clarity on the three parts of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost and how the Son, God the Son, had to relate to us in order to save us. He had to come in the form of a man. We want to touch on today that relationship, that relatable relationship that we have with God, that relatable relationship. Um, in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28, and I'm going to read verses 28 through 30, and I'm in the NIV. I'm in the NIV version. And this is good. This is good. This is, this is one of them scriptures where it's just a drop the mic. It's just a drop the mic moment. Many of us quote this scripture, and we have heard it many times. So in the book of Romans, chapter 8, Verses 28 in the NIV version, it reads, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So underline, <clears throat> if you have a Bible that you can write in or something, underline where it says the firstborn of many brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters is the operating word in verses 30. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Okay, so that is Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 30. And the reason I wanted to focus or hone in on the words uh, brothers and sisters, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters, that who might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Who 
might be the firstborn. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So Jesus Christ, in his God the Son capacity, is now an active brother to us. If you are if if you if you are a young lady or a young man or if you are a more mature young lady or mature young man based off your age whatever the case may be Jesus Christ is your brother God the son is your brother and this is why when you had God the son your brother calling out to God or praying to God he was giving us an example of how we are to pray and how we are to call out to our heavenly father. See, in, in God the Son, in that capacity, Jesus Christ wasn't putting himself above us. He was bringing himself down, lowering, lowering himself and making himself an equal, an equal in order to save us. Because I cannot save you if I cannot relate to you. And this is why uh, today's message is relatable relationships. Relatable relationships. Because in order to save, you first must be a kinsman redeemer. Now, a kinsman redeemer was a person that would pay the debt for a relative. The only person that could pay the debt had to be a relative. He had to be the relative next in line to pay the debt for so said relative that owed a debt. Now, what is the debt that is owed? The wages of sin is death. The debt that we owed as men and women, as children of God, created in God's image was death. That is what we owed. We owed the, the, the debt was death because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That is also what we know in the book of Romans. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. None of us are without sin. And the wages of sin is death. If you think a wrong thing, if you look at a person the wrong way, if you have actively committed a physical, a verbal, or, or cognitive thought of sin, you are guilty of sin. We all have sinned. And even if you want to go as far as say, well, I lived a perfect life, and, and, and or let's use a baby as an example, and there's no way that that baby has sinned, that baby is innocent, that baby just been born, the baby two minutes old in, in, in the maternity ward at the hospital, yes, that baby has sinned. Why has that baby sinned? Because we are born into sin. We are born into sin. And you may say, well, how can somebody so innocent or, and never did nothing, don't know nothing about nothing, be born into sin? Because the children that we bear have our blood in it. It has my blood. That's why we say we are saved by the blood. Because, see, we are saved by the blood of who? By the blood of Jesus Christ. See, it, now Jesus Christ's blood was pure. I can be saved by his blood, but my children can't be saved by my blood because my blood is filthy and it is full of sin. It is full of all of the bad things I have done throughout my life. And some things that I may even do later on today. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I have sin in me. And sin is in my blood, but there is one who has purified blood, who has justifying blood, who, have, who has cleansing blood, and that is Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is the firstborn of many brothers and sisters. Now, these brothers and sisters are you and me, and Jesus Christ is related to us. So God had to step down, become one of us, wrap himself in flesh and become one of us in order to relate to us, in order to save us. Because if I cannot relate to you, I cannot save you. 
And that and that is that is what the message is is, is relatable relationships. And and the other example I believe I use is language. If I'm not speaking your language, that means you don't understand me. And if you don't understand me, you can't relate to what I am saying. If you can't relate to what I'm saying, you're not going to hear what I am saying. If you're not going to hear what I am saying, how can I lead you to God? How can I lead you to Christ? How can I teach you or show you or illustrate to you a better way? If I'm speaking a language that you do not understand and that you cannot relate to. So henceforth, you have Jesus Christ, you have God coming in the form of Jesus Christ, coming down, wanting to relate, not just to me, but to all mankind. He came and died for all mankind in all God's creation. He died for all of creation as well because he came down to relate to us. I, 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 I'm trying to make that as clear as possible. Okay, so if a person is, 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 is not understood and you don't understand what I'm saying, there's no, there's no connection. Now, in order to build a relationship, you must have connection. That is what relationships mean. Um, the definition of relationship is the way in which two or more things are connected. The definition of relationship is the way in which two or more things are connected or the state of being connected. Because in order to have a continual relationship, you must be continually connected to me. You, you, do, do you understand what I'm saying? And now we know we get relatable in relationships. Those are one and the same. It's interesting. You have relatable and relationships. Now, those two in itself are connected. You can't save me unless you can relate to me, and we can't have a relationship unless you are relatable or, or, or unless you can relate to me. Relatable, related, and relationships. This is what we're talking about. Relatable relationships. So Jesus Christ puts on this flesh, God himself puts on this flesh, steps down to come down to relate and to connect with us in order that he might redeem us, in order that he might be a kinsman redeemer. Because you got to be kin to me in order to save me. Okay, because like I've mentioned before, had God not stepped down, it would be easy for us to say, well, you don't understand what I'm going through. But God can say, yes, I do. I have been there and I have done that. I have died on the cross and I have rose. I have been cheated on. I have been lied to. I have been mistreated. I have been beaten. I have been abandoned. I have been abused. I have not been accepted by my own brothers and sisters. I, my, I have had friends who have called themselves friends turn their backs on me. I can relate to every single thing you currently are going through, things you have went through, and things you will go through in the future. I have had a lot and I have lost a lot. I was up on heaven in high, on high and I stepped down and I was born a poor man. Do, do, do you understand? What I'm, there is nothing in this world that God has not touched and cannot be touched by. There, th th that's the word empathy. When somebody says they, they empathize with you, that means I understand what you are going through. I understand what you have been through and I can relate to you. And if I can relate to you, we can then build a relationship relatable relationships that's what we talking about and this is what God this is what Jesus Christ came to establish this is what God came to establish in the form of Jesus Christ he 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 said I got to relate 
to my people. I got to come down there and, and, and feel their infirmities. I got to feel what it feels like to cry. I got to feel what it feels like to do without. I got to feel what it feels like to be betrayed. I got to feel what it feels like to be left abandoned, beaten, abused, accused, and wrongly convicted. But before I can save them, I first got to step down and relate to them because if I don't step down it can, you can easily be accused of you don't understand but there is one that does understand and his name is Jesus Christ make no mistake about it okay so 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 now we got the kinsman redeemer so you got different kind of relationships you got interpersonal relationships so we went over related we went over relatable and we went over relationships. And I, I, I want to touch on the different types of relationships. So you have what, what is called an interpersonal relationship. Now, an interpersonal relationship is the type of relationship where we have um, a connect maybe on social issues. We can, I give you an example. We can both be for there are social injustices going on and we want to change the laws in regards to uh, how police are policing the inner cities. And we may line up on that and, and we may march for, to change the policies on how police are policing the inner cities or we may march on the voting rights for the, the state of Georgia or in the cities or the surrounding areas of Georgia and in Atlanta and in Washington. And we may have social agreement and a social connect in regards to social injustices. So that is like a interpersonal relationship. Or we can be co-workers. We can both work at Walmart. We can both work at Home Depot. And we both have a goal to come in to work and to stock the shelves and what you don't do, I do. What I don't do, you do, but we are both on the same team for Walmart or we are both on the same team for Home Depot. We are both on the same team for our place of employment so we have a interpersonal relationship, okay? So we are connected. It's a relationship, but we are connected because we have something in common that we agree on. The next form or type of a relationship is an intimate relationship. You have interpersonal relationship, then you have an intimate relationship. Now, an intimate relationship, a lot of us sometimes immediately go to um, our flesh or the thoughts of our flesh, and we think that involves some type of sexual encounter in, in, uh, in order to be it considered intimate. And sometimes we use intimacy to, to we sometimes we use a sexual encounter to describe how intimate you are in a relationship with a person. So we ask a question, are y'all intimate or have you been intimate? And what we are thinking of in our psyche is only the sexual part. But I'm here to tell you that is not the definition of an intimate relationship. It, a, a, a intimate relationship can have nothing to do with, with, with the sexual or the physical contact of one's flesh. An intimate relationship is a, a, a personal association, a belonging with, with, with together. You, you, you feel something with that person. Y'all are familiar. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? And, 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 it's, and it's an effective connection. You guys move in sync together. It's, I, I give you an example. If you ever in a relationship, this is an intimate, an example of an intimate relationship. If you ever in a relationship and you have a spouse or or a or a a boyfriend or a girlfriend, and you guys are in a setting of a group of people, and I can be on one side of the room talking to some people, and your spouse or your your friend, your boyfriend or your girlfriend, the person you are in an intimate relationship with, can be on another side of the room, but y'all can make eye contact. Y'all can make eye contact. Nothing sexual has to go on, but y'all feel one another from two opposite sides of the room. That is an intimate 
relationship where you can connect with a person you guys are familiar when 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 you hungry uh, they kind of feel hungry or when you got a taste for a certain type of food they got a certain taste for a certain type of food so an uh, intimate relationship is beyond we co-workers you, do, do, does that make sense it's beyond you know we both know we need to stack the shelves and that's the only type of relationship we got or we're both for social injustices that's the only type of relationship we got no an intimate relationship is more of a familiar relationship i am very closely familiar to you and this is the kind of relationship that jesus christ wants with you he wants the relatable relationship. He's already related to us because he put on flesh just like you and me. He bled just like you and me. He cried just like you and me. Do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? So he's relatable. He, when he got hit, he bruised just like you and me. Do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? He's been accused just like you and me. He's been betrayed just like you and me. He had things and he lost them just like you and me. So he is relatable to us in that regard. So he is our kinsman redeemer. He is our kinfolk. He is kin to me. That is our brother. Do you understand what I'm saying? So now you have the relationship and the relationship is just um, the way in which two or more things connect. So now we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. But what he wants with us is ultimately an intimate relationship. He wants to be familiar with you. He wants to, to feel you and he wants you to feel him. Do you, do, do you got what I'm saying? This is what we're talking about. Relatable relationships. Now, I'm going I'm to go right here. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to start wrapping this up. There are reasons we as people cancel relationships. There are reasons that we as people cancel relationships. We can feel not appreciated. Relationship over. You don't appreciate me. We can feel unwanted. Relationship is over. I can feel not accepted by you. Relationship, man, is over. You can owe me money. That's one of, the, one of the ones at the top of a lot of our relationships that we fell out behind. Relationship is over. You can ignore me. And yet you, you don't pay no attention to me when I'm speaking, when I'm talking. Relationship is over. You don't compliment me enough. You don't give me my props. You don't give me my attaboys and attagirls enough. Relationship is over. Lack of communication. The relationship is over. A lot of the relationships in regards to marriage relationships end because of lack of communication as well as all of those other things I named. We write them off quick. We leave them alone quick. It has been close family members. It has been close friends that we have written off because they have violated one of those. You didn't appreciate me. You, you, I felt ignored by you. You didn't communicate with me and you owe me some money. A debt. But here it is. We have a God who we owed a debt to and the debt was our life. It was our life because that was, the, that was the penalty of sin. And here it is, we owe him our life, but he paid that debt. He paid that price and he died in the place for you and me. So now, what do you owe him? You owe him your life. Do, 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 do you get what I'm saying? So here we go. I'm quick to cancel you if you ignore me. But praise God for Jesus Christ who won't cancel us because we ignore him. Oh, my goodness. How many times have people tried to reach you with the word of God? How many times have people tried to talk to you about Jesus Christ? How many times have you been invited to church 
to Bible study, to a hug group, to a 714 daily devotional in the morning, and you ignored Jesus Christ calling upon your life. Oh my goodness. Feeling unwanted? How much dust is on your Bible at the house? Feeling unwanted. The word of God collecting dust on a shelf, collecting dust on a, on, on, a, on a chair, on a table, in a closet. Feeling unwanted. Okay? Ignored. Not appreciated. I died for you. I paid the penalty that you could not pay. I stood in your place. And paid that penalty. Jesus Christ did. Not me. Because he died for me too. Make no mistake about it. But feeling unappreciated. We have ignored Jesus Christ. We don't communicate with Jesus Christ. We don't accept Jesus Christ. We always got a problem or issue with Jesus Christ. With church. And we bring up these um, non-consequential um, reasons as to why. They did me wrong at that church. Jesus Christ ain't did you wrong. Don't be mad at Jesus Christ because of something I said or something I did. He ain't did nothing to you. I know I am supposed to be a representative of him, but in that case, I didn't represent him right. Why you going to blame him? Charge that to me. If I said something crazy, if I did something that wasn't right, don't charge that to Jesus Christ. You charge that to me. Jesus Christ ain't did nothing but die for you. Jesus Christ ain't did nothing but protect you. Jesus Christ ain't did nothing but provide for you and love you and comfort you. You can't find nothing that Jesus Christ did to you, but you want to leave the church, which is the body of Christ. See, don't let what somebody did run you away from Jesus Christ. But these are the same things we will cancel a relationship for. But yet we do these same things to Jesus Christ. Praise God. He is so much bigger than us. See, he can overlook us ignoring him. He can overlook us not communicating with him. He can overlook us not accepting him and he can still love us. That is the mercy of God. That is the compassion of forgiveness. That's what mercy is. Though he has the power to punish us and to harm us for our wrong, his mercy, God's mercy allows him to forgive us for our wrongs. When we reject him, he still forgive us. You better get in line. I'm telling you, man, you better get in line quick. Don't let people like me or nobody that walks and talks on this earth like me run you away from Jesus Christ, your Lord and your Savior. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because the same things that we would have the audacity to cancel a relationship for is the exact same things we do to Jesus Christ. But praise God that he is merciful and he does not cancel you. He does not cancel me. He's bigger than us. He's still willing to accept you with your faults, still willing to accept you ignoring him. And he is still willing to love you. He knew you would ignore him. He knew you wouldn't communicate with him. And he knew you wouldn't accept him for who he was before he died for you. And yet he still chose to die for you in order to build a relatable relationship. This is what we're talking about, a relatable relationship. You better get in line and you better get in line right now with the one who truly loves you. The one who truly loves you is Jesus Christ. And he's accepting us as we are. He is the firstborn of many brothers and sisters, calling us brothers and sisters. This is how much he, 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 God is calling you his brother and his sister. God created you in his image. What more do you want? What more do you want? I have given you my life, Jesus Christ. He has given us his life. What more can I give you? 
money. You, you can leave your children um, money, houses, cars, diamonds, gold, jewelry, whatever the case may be. But to give your life, that's it. Once I give my life, that's everything. There's nothing else. He has died on the cross for you and for me so that he could relate to us. This is the relationship that God is trying to build with us. And the only way we're going to build this relationship is lest we communicate with Jesus Christ. And I'm going to say it again. I say it, said it before. How do we communicate? It comes in the form of one person talking and one person listening. How does that take place? Right now I'm doing the talking. Some of y'all are listening. Some of y'all not. Some, some of y'all don't tune down. <laughs> but the more I talk, the more you listen, we build a relationship and vice versa. And I hear sometimes as I meet and talk to y'all, you say, yeah, I felt that. I understood that, man. Thank you for that. And y'all talk back to me and I listen and we build a relationship in that way. How does God talk to us? How does Jesus Christ talk to us? How does the Holy Spirit communicate with us through the Bible? Always look at the Bible as, as, a, as a pair of lips. As you see me up here talking, this is God talking to you. This is God talking to you. So you need to read it. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Some of you can get an audio Bible and you can, and you can physically hear it. You can play the audio Bible or CD on your Bluetooth in your car or whatever the case may be on your iPhone. And you can physically hear the word of God. Some of us need to read it or, some, or you can read it. All of the options, how you want it. He has made it so easy for you. You want me to just play it in your audio or, you, or, or are you a reader? If you're not a reader, and I get that some people don't read books. If you're not a reader, get the audio of the Bible. Feed your soul. Feed your soul. Go to sleep with it on. Go to sleep with the word of God playing in your ears. We go to sleep with that garbage. See, some of us got better relationships with Cardi B, with Beyonce, with some of these, the, the latest rappers. Uh, who's some of the latest rappers, man? Uh, uh, I don't know. Young Jeezy, Jay-Z. Uh, Nipsey Hussle, um, you know, we got we got better relationships with them. Why do I say that? Because I can recite what Beyonce say word for word. You know, girls, they run the world. Girls, they run the world. Her songs be like a mantra. You know, we marching to them, we singing them, whatnot. And 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 the fellas is rapping. You you know, um, I'm kind of out of touch. I see, I hear it from time to time, but we can recite the rap lyrics to a song. You know, Ice Cube today was a good day. You know, we can recite the, the, the lyrics to the song, but can't recite the scripture. Do, do you see? So Ice Cube has spoken to me through his rap lyrics, and I'm reciting his rap lyrics back. I'm speaking back to him what he has spoken to me. That is communication. I am building a relationship with the music of Ice Cube. I am building a relationship with the music of Cardi B, with the music of, of, of Megan uh, the, the Stallion. I'm building a relationship with these people, but won't build a relationship with God. Won't listen to the lyrics of God, won't read the lyrics of the books of Psalms and recite those lyrics back, but oh, I can quote um, something off what, what, what Jay-Z said, what Nas said, what Beyonce said, oh, I can quote that word from word, from beginning of the song to the end. I play it in my cars, I play it at my house, I got it on my iPhone. Man, I got that locked down. I got that loaded. So you got a better relationship with people that cannot save you than you do with God. How mixed up or how confused is that? Think about it. You got a better relationship and they ain't even talking about that. They go and ask Beyonce, Cardi B, or any one of them people I name, is they going to die for you? Huh? For one, you can't even get to them. You, go, you got to go through uh, uh, levels and levels and levels and levels of security, yellow tape, 
assistants, associates, they, you won't even get to them to even ask them that question. But here we have a God that we can go boldly before the throne. We can go boldly before him. The, 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 the veil of the temple has rent. Here we have a God that sits upon high, the creator of all things that say, come, come to me. Come to me, those whom are, whom are heavy burdened. Cast your cares upon me. I care for you. I'm listening, I'm listening to you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm there for you. Here we have that God that is here for us, but I, I, I'm ignoring him. But I'm going to press play on, on, on what's on my playlist. Do you understand what I'm saying? We got wrong relationships built with the wrong people, the people that can't save us from nothing. Give your life to the one who loves you. If you got the common sense to cut people off for not appreciating you, how you gonna cut God off and not appreciate him? Think about it. If you want to receive Jesus Christ right now, just wherever you are at, just bow your heads and repeat this prayer with me. And as our pastor always says, not the words of the prayer that save you. It's what's actually in your heart. Do you really want to build a relationship with Jesus Christ? Or you want to build a relationship with everything else that can't save you in the end? The blessing and the mercies and the love of God is it's your choice. He's not going to force you. He's not going to make you. But he's there for you. When you are ready, he is there. He's here right now. If you believe this in your heart, wherever you are at, just, just bow your heads. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Father, my God, I believe. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. And I believe that Jesus Christ was resurrected on the third day. I believe that Jesus Christ is seated at your right hand, our God. Come into my life and come into my heart right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. A relatable relationship. Today, if you said that prayer and you believe that, sincerely be real. Be true to yourself. Start building your relationship with God. He loves you. He died for you. He's given his life. Anybody that gives their life, I, I mean, what, what, what more can I give? I love you guys. I got to get out of here. I'll talk to you all soon. Um, we got a lot of things coming up. We finna start back our, our in-service church in, in June, next month in June on Father's Day weekend. And we will also have another drive-in service in the month of May. We got one today, but we will also have another one, I believe, in um, not next week, but the following week. So God bless you. Get your uh, sacraments ready for today's first Sunday. We're getting ready to take communion, and I can't wait to see you all soon. I just want you to know I love you. I love you with the love of Christ. But there is one that loves you way more, far beyond what I ever could, and his name is Jesus Christ. I'll talk to you all soon.